Hello, good evening. My name is John Ruman. I work with the real 007, Mr. Roger Moore of Sales Training Academy in the beautiful country of Trinidad and Tobago, helping you achieve sales excellence and make the numbers better than ever. So I'm going to go in today the top five reasons why people buy from you. And I'm going to go into each of them in depth with the time allotted and I'll explain them. And what I'll do in future videos is actually go into each one of these in depth. And then I'll actually from there ask you for which one you think is the most popular. So I'm going to give you the five and I'm going to ask you to rank them if you can. So here are the five and these are not in any particular order, but this will be helpful for you. So basically the first one is having a feeling of control or many options. So you can say option slash control would be number option one. Option two would be the confidence of the person in the sales position. Option three would be the quality. Option four would be price, what the actual pricing of the item is. And item five would be service. So again, we have service, price, quality, confidence, and options and control. And I'll tell you why this is so important. Hey, Hayden, how you doing, man? Is it's important that you understand people don't buy on price. Of these top five, price is one of them. I want you to let me know which you think is the top. And if you're missing this and you're catching this live later on, cool. But write these down and let me know what you think is most important because I will in a future video actually rank these for you. So I'm going to go over them, um, no particular order. Let's hit the most common one, price. That is how you price your item, how it may be competitive or not competitive relative to the market price, uh, place when it comes to its price point, how you have maybe done research on that to come up with the price. So price is a perception of any consideration for any purchase. Service hopefully speaks for itself. Service is how well you take care of people, how well you love them up, how well before you buy and after the person buys from you, they think this is an amazing experience. And most importantly, you actually build a relationship so the person has a strong incentive emotionally to buy from you over and over again, which is what you want. You don't want a one time purchase. Okay. So we have price serves quality. So that would be the perceived, how nice something is, how good it looks, how long does it last? This may have to do with warranty. So if you have an item that has a warranty or a guarantee around it, that's kind of where this would play. Uh, role, but it's also important to understand the perceived quality of the product. So if you have a service, there are things that you can do to upgrade the perceived quality. Uh, that could be anything from certifications, accreditations, um, people you're involved with, could be the process you take people through. It could actually be your price, believe it or not. You should believe that. If I charge 10 times as much as the typical person in, in, in an industry, you're going to assume there's a higher level of quality. Okay. Next one is confidence. That is how much bravado, how much I believe in what I sell you. You need this because you have a desire and I can fill that desire. So that is the confidence in the salesperson to project what they feel is the reason this person should be making the purchase. So that's the confidence side of things. Last but not least, a feeling of control. The feeling of the options that you, when you go into a place, um, whether it's online or physical or a mix, and you have choices, you may have no choices, you may have lots of choices, you may feel like you have too many choices, but what this comes from is there's been a lot of studies that people have felt that they've been pigeonholed into buying something. So they've been not given enough choice. They said, well, here's your two options. That's it. And you're like, wow, that's great, but I want more choice. So that's what you give them. You give them options. Um, on the online space, you usually see a minimum of three options. There's usually a premium, cheapy, cheapy, maybe even freemium, meaning no real cost. And then like the moderate one, which they say is the one that's the most popular. Again, um, 
choice. And then if there's too many choices, it can actually deter. So a quick thing on this, they actually did a study of a, it was two options for jams, for like jelly. And there was, I, I'm going to give you rough numbers. I know one was six options and the other was 25 or something. The person who had six options was 10 times more likely to buy than the person with the mid 20s. So six options versus mid 20 options, let's say 25, 10 times more likely to buy. 10 times. And think about it. You get stuck in indecision like, I don't know what to do. I mean, we can only make so many decisions in a day. If it's hard to make the decision and we feel like there's too much, it can be bad. So on both directions, both sides of the spectrum, too many choices like 51 flavor Baskin Robbins to too few, you must do this, here's your only option. And no one likes to feel trapped or like the salespersons try to bottleneck them into this one thing. So it's important that you understand you give people options and they have lots of choice. So briefly, I'm going to tell you how you can improve these things. And then again, I will go in depth into each of these at some point. So, okay. So the feeling of feeling uh, of control and options, again, give people options, give them a sense of control. Do not give them too little, but give them two, ideally three or more. Uh, confidence. This is you. So this is how you feel about how you present yourself. You must feel powerful, confident, steadfast. What they need, you have, and you can, you know without a shadow of a doubt the value of what you're bringing to the table. That's you, you the person in the sales position. Quality. Again, if it's digital or physical, it doesn't really matter, service or physical product. That doesn't matter. What matters is the perceived quality and actual quality, and you can back that up with some sort of guarantee. Service. This is you taking your business to a higher level. If you give crappy service, good luck. It will hurt you in the long run. And a company that has better service and similar product will blow you out of the water eventually. So even with fast food chains, like I'm in Trinidad, some of the chains locally, bad service. So because of that, I actually think there's a high chance that higher quality service providers of similar end products can actually take over. Um, it'll take them time and they'll need to build a trend. But hey, Daryl, but it's important that you understand service is huge. And then last but not least, price. So you can adjust your prices. You can be below the market. I would encourage you never to make yourself broke. Um, test out pricing. So if you are having a new business, test out pricing. Uh, interview those who are target market for you and they are helpful for you to um, come up with a price point that they would feel is comfortable and you can test this out. And a great book is called The Lean Startup by Eric Reese. I think it's R-I-E-S or R-E-I-S and that's a great help for you to help you come up with the idea of testing what you have going on to see if it's valuable for those who want to buy from you. So if you have any questions on these, again, price, service, quality, confidence, and a feeling of control or options on the buyer's perspective, when you have your, your business and if you're in sales, you have to make sure you have these things understood because these are the reasons people actually make the purchase. So if you find that you need help in any way when it comes to sales, again, I work with Roger Moore in the Sales Training Academy and we have a simulated based approach to help individuals, their teams, large groups, large big companies, small companies to grow their sales and to help them make sure they understand the client. And most importantly, as we harp over and over again, you must build relationships, not sell. People l love to buy, but they, sorry, people hate to be sold, but they love to buy. So make sure you give them a buying atmosphere. And when you understand these five things, it will be super helpful in your actual long-term success. So let me know any questions you have. Please share this with your friends if you have friends in sales or friends in business because most business owners don't understand what's happening here. And business owners are often the biggest sales person for an organization. Our next course starts up the 13th of September, the six-week course, and we have another cold calling course coming up, I think, the 2nd of September. Have an awesome night. Thank you for watching.